And last year, I was able to do something that nobody thought was possible. And you have to really think about this and study this, because it's very important. We ended Roe v. Wade. You just think about that. Well done, Donald Trump. Aren't you a wonderful, generous, kind, and spirited man that you managed to prevent women all over the United States from having an abortion? That is just wonderful. Congratulations to you. It must mean so much to you. Look, seriously, the United States as a whole, women, when polled, Men, when polled, they do not want abortion to be illegal. That is basically how it goes. Poll after poll after poll, the majority of Americans believe that a woman should have the right to choose. And let me give you a statistic that you might not be aware of, something that actually never really gets spoken about, and that is that one in three women in this country will have an abortion in their lifetime. One in three. Just think about that. Donald Trump is taking away a, a right from one in three women in the United States. Because people have to get elected. We have to get elected. But I did something that for 52 years, people talked. They spent vast amounts of money in fighting it, but they couldn't get the job done. 52 years they fought, and they fought hard. And they spent large, they'd have fundraisers every night, they couldn't get the job done. I got the job done. I got it done. And the polling might be in support for Donald Trump and his delicious plan to remove health care from women. If you are asking, I don't know, Christian nationalists or, or evangelical Christians or, you know, groups of, of religious extremists, but we're looking across the entire country. We're looking at the majority of the United States. And the polling does not support the argument from these groups. The majority of U.S. adults, including those living in states with the strictest limits on abortion, want it to be legal, at least through the initial stages of pregnancy. That was a poll from the Associated Press, Nork Center for Public Affairs Research, a recent poll. All of my quotes here will be recent polls. That was from late June, a year after the undoing of Roe v. Wade in the Supreme Court. The nationwide right to an abortion that had been in place for 50 years. And it's thanks to the three great Supreme Court justices and others on the court that I appointed this issue has been returned to the states where all legal scholars on both sides felt it should be. A few points. Now the pro-life community has tremendous negotiating power. You had none. The poll found 73% of all U.S. adults, including 58% of those in states with the strictest bans, believe abortion should be allowed at six weeks of pregnancy. Gallup did a poll that showed 85% of Americans believe abortion should be legal. NPR, PBS NewsHour, Marist did a poll. They, they discovered that 61% said they mostly support abortion rights. 61% supporting abortion rights, and yet Donald Trump is convinced that to get elected, he needs to be saying this stuff. He needs to be confirming that he was the one that brought this about and taking ownership for removing a woman's right to choose in the United States. A third of Republicans also qualify themselves as mostly supporting abortion rights. A third of Republicans, not an insignificant share in a party that has made opposition to abortion rights a litmus test for political candidates. Now, a pollster for Vox.com, Theresa Undam, wrote that the standard measure used to report the public views on abortion, polling questions used by Pew Research Center, Gallup, Washington Post, ABC News, and others, she said, are, are likely at best flawed. They don't capture how people really think about abortion. The standard measure asks respondents about when or in what cases abortion should be legal. The question wording and the response categories vary across pollsters, but when collapsed into two categories, legal and illegal, you tend to get a divided opinion. Pew, for example, the question they ask people is, do you think abortion should be legal in all cases, legal in most cases, illegal in most cases, or illegal in all cases? 
Well, when it comes to real-life views on the issue, how people actually experience abortion, the numbers get even more intriguing. Among people who said abortion should only be legal in rare cases, 71% said they would give support to a close friend or family member who had an abortion. 69% said they want the experience of having an abortion to be non-judgmental. 66% said they want the experience to be supportive, 64% want the experience to be affordable, and 59% want the experience to be without added burdens. So what's going on? When some respondents say abortion should be legal only in rare cases, are they thinking of an ideal but unrealistic world? Are they answering the question in personal terms, cases in which they personally would consider an abortion? In reality, they want each person to decide, there and then, as individuals, rather than have the government decide. Meanwhile, states are passing laws that are closing clinics and limiting access And more than 200 anti-abortion bills have been proposed in state legislatures across the country. Republicans in Congress are attaching anti-abortion legislation wherever they can. Recently to a bill about doctors' reimbursements for Medicare patients. We need to ask questions about how the public views abortion policy and do so in a real and accurate way. This is the reality that, you know, nothing is black and white, that life is nuanced. Health care in the U.S. is a bit of an oxymoron. You know, it's like for those that can afford it, they're going to have abortions, whether they are Republican or Democrat. But what we need to get to is a point where women can choose between them and their health professional what is right for them, not for a white, rich lawmaker, or even a deranged and disgraced ex-president to decide for you. We ended Roe v. Wade. You just think about this. You just think about this. I'm Anthony Davis. You can hear me every day on the 5-Minute News podcast, on Wednesdays co-hosting Uncovered, and on Sundays on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.